Hey guys, I'm Chris Ignano. You're watching my YouTube channel, so thanks a lot for that. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about this spider here. This is a Chilean rose hair. It's a tarantula. Tarantulas are primitive spiders, okay? And uh, I'll talk a little about that in a minute, but let me go pick her up real quick. Okay. So here you go. This is our, uh, got some uh, stuff stuck on me. But this is our Chilean rose hair tarantula, see? Not an aggressive species, is it? She's not being aggressive at all. They're from Chile. Now I gotta cradle her because spiders don't actually have blood like you know, birds and mammals and stuff do. They have a hemolymph. So there's no red blood cells in there. In fact, their blood doesn't communicate oxygen very well either. And uh, they don't breathe through spiracles like other insects because these aren't insects, they're arachnids. Okay? They breathe through what are called book lungs. On the bottom side of the abdomen here, on both sides, there's these little openings. And uh, the lungs themselves are situated kind of like the pages of an open book. So they call them book lungs. So it's a very primitive form of breathing, a respiratory system. And their blood, lacking the red cells, it's a bluish blood. Okay? And it doesn't clot well. So I'm cradling her as best as I can, and I'm not holding her high up from anything, so if she were to fall, okay, because they do fall, their abdomen can, can break or rupture, and it can bleed to death, okay? In fact, some of the pet owners, if, if one gets injured and starts bleeding, uh, one of the things I've heard that works pretty good is like either a piece of toilet paper just put over it, over the wound, or even toothpaste, anything to stop the bleeding, because they can bleed to death through that wound, or even dehydrate. But that's not what I'm talking about. Okay, tarantulas are primitive spiders. Now, when I say primitive, I basically mean that um, these are like the first forms of spiders to exist. They don't build complex webs. Their silk isn't exactly sticky. It's not used for ensnaring their prey. In fact, the only time they really build a web is either to line their burrows, just to make it more comfortable. Okay, they like to be nice too, you know, cozy. Or uh, when they're about to lay eggs, you know, they'll, they'll create a mat with their web, lay the eggs on it, and then wrap it up. You know, it's like the wrapping paper for their eggs to protect them. And then the males will also lay a, a sheet of silk out and put their sperm on it. And then they'll use their pedipelps, which are these little parts. Those little things there under the front that look like hands. That's a leg there, that doesn't count. But the, the little hand-looking appendage there, see that one held up there? That's a pedipelp. Okay? It's kind of like their hand. They use it to manipulate their food and other objects. And uh, the males, it gets a little bit bigger. And they'll use it to soak up sperm. They'll put their hands in sperm, soak it up. And then they'll place their hands, their pedipelps, into the female's cloaca, which is her reproductive, an opening for her organs, her reproductive organs. And he'll place it in there and fertilize her that way. So it's not exactly as fun as what we do. Um, the males also have these little hooks on their legs, their front legs, that they use to hold the female's legs up so that they lift up so that he can reach her opening because they face each other when they're mating. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. Um, also, if a spider, any spider really, lifts up its fang, its legs and stuff, that's a threat display. It shows you, that it's like, leave me alone, dude, I'll bite you. Um, but tarantulas really need to do that because when they bite, they lift up and bite down. Okay, their fangs are like this, so they go like that to bite if they want to get a really good strike in. Whereas modern spiders, their fangs are like this, okay, so they don't have to do that. Um, and a lot of tarantulas have red. So can you see some of that reddish stuff there? You see some of that reddish under her calicria? The calicria are the things that the fangs come out of. The fangs are at the bottom, okay? And uh, they have red there that helps you see that, you know, helps give you a more alarming threat display. So that's pretty neat. And being invertebrates, they do molt because their exoskeleton, their skin, kind of gets tight. So as they grow, they have to shed that. They're very vulnerable when they do it. You might see them laying on their back. When you come home one day, you find your tarantula on its back, and you're like, oh my god, something's wrong with it. Like what I did when I was younger. So I put it back on its feet because I was concerned something was wrong with the spider. Well, that wasn't a good idea because I look up in my book and it's like, you might find it on its back and you're going to put it on its feet. Don't do this. It's molting. And it's like, oh my God. So I put it back. She molded. She did fine. Usually with spiders, the females are bigger 
they live longer, like 25 years for a species like this. Whereas the males might be just a year or two. Um, but the Sydney funnel web, it's different. The male's bigger and more aggressive, very aggressive. But not these guys. The spider's not harming me, is she? Really pretty species. Now let me see if I can show you some other footage here. In there, if you look carefully, I'm going to feeling around. I'm trying to see if, I'm trying to show you her. Can you see that? See those fangs in there? It's black, shiny fangs. Spiders, tarantulas especially, have very big fangs. Okay, can you see that? Look at those fangs. It's really hard to show you though. It's not the brightest day. We've got a storm coming in. Okay, see that red? That's to give you a better threat display when they're trying to protect themselves or defend themselves. They want you to see that red. It's contrasting, it's alarming. Okay? Pretty impressive fangs, aren't they? You wouldn't want to get bit by one of them, huh? Now granted, it's not going to be that, that venomous or anything. It's not going to harm you that way. But it's just the sheer concept of being poked by something that big kind of hurts a little bit. It's like being stabbed with a pin. Some people say it feels a bit like a bee sting. But the pain goes away almost immediately. Okay? Pretty impressive, huh? And as you see, she's a nice species. Not aggressive whatsoever. Okay? Look at that. Really pretty. Barely weighs anything. You know, just a cute spider. Kind of wish I could hug her, but I can't. Look at those beautiful iridescent rose hairs on her cephalothorax. Okay? Spiders have two body segments. The abdomen, which is there, and the cephalothorax there, which is the head and body fused together, like the chest and head area. Whereas insects have the thorax, the head, and the abdomen. So they have three segments and six legs. Spiders have eight legs and eight eyes. Um, and non-compound eyes. Insects have compound eyes. Now see those things at the back? Those black things? They look like fingers. Those are the spinnerets. All the silk comes out of them. And some spiders will have up to 36 different types of silk. Tarantulas have a lot less because they're primitive. And they can move those. They can manipulate those like fingers. It's neat to watch them going along the ground laying out their silk to line their burrow with. Pretty cool stuff. I can't show you her abdomen. I can't show you her lungs or anything because I don't want her to fall and get hurt. She won't love that. But a cool spider. So that's one species down. This is a tarantula. Texas and, uh, well, basically the southwest, you know, central U.S., we have tarantulas and stuff out there. Not this species, but we have the Texas brown and stuff. So this is the Chilean rose hair. Some species of tarantula aggressive, some aren't. Rose hairs are generally great great for pets because they're, especially for beginners, they're pretty friendly, pretty mild-mannered, real easy to take care of. They can handle different temperature variations and stuff, but I'm going to put her back in her cage. Come on, hon. Thank you. Now, some native peoples will obviously harvest tarantulas for food, okay? And they are, in a way, related to kind of lobsters and things, you know, megalomorphs, arthropods, but I'm not going there. Um, they eat these tarantulas, cook them up, get the hairs off, because the hairs are irritating. They're itchy and kind of burn. If you get them in your eyes, forget about it. You won't be able to see for a day because it's going to hurt so much. So it's a defensive mechanism. The tarantulas will sometimes wave their back leg across their abdomen to flick hairs out into a cloud as a defense mechanism, you know, for something that's about to eat them. Um, and they used to sell it in itching powder, okay, as a joke, tarantula hair. So if that got in your eyes, oh my God. Um, but what I was saying is sometimes these natives will eat these tarantulas, cook them up and eat them, and then they'd use the fangs as a toothpick. Let's move on. Chris Ignato, signing out.